Good morning everyone, um, it's a bank holiday Monday, <clears throat> I completely forgot it was a bank holiday Monday, so um, yeah, I'm working on speakers, and um, I've got a pair of IMF, I think they're super compact Mark 1s, that have been sent to me by <clears throat> a chap called Tim. Um, really for an initial evaluation, um, they've had the tweeter and mid-range drivers replaced with non-original parts and um, I think he's fairly happy with the way they sound um, I'm not too sure really but probably not hence why they're here um, to have an initial look at them give them a measure up and um, just see what's uh, what's kind of needed really so if we let's talk about the measurements first so first thing I do when a pair of speakers arrives is do initial measurements. Um, there's a lot of issues with the speaker that actually are quite difficult to hear. Um, so the measurements to me are really important. Um, I shoot on axis measurements, horizontal measurements, vertical measurements. I look at the distortion um, and I also look at the uh, cumulative spectral, spectral decay or the waterfall um, to see whether there's stored energy, ringing, <clears throat> that sort of thing. And those measurements can tell you so much. So, um, yeah, it's it's good to, um, to be able to do them. And uh, I don't think you can do this sort of work without doing that. Um, plus also, as you know, I like building my own speakers. And whilst the end... Um, tweaks are by the best measurement equipment in the world, urea. Um, you need the measurements to get you basically there. Anyway, um, yeah, nice compact size, hence I guess the name. So we're looking at a speaker that is um, 29 and a half wide, 28 centimeters deep, and uh, 45 and a half centimeters tall so yeah nice and compact size hence um, you know why it was probably pretty easy for these to be posted anyway measurements um, this is the right speaker this is the left that's how they've been marked on the back so I'm going to refer to them that way so if we talk about the on-axis measurements first the right speaker here the high frequencies are very peaked up um, at around 13k and there is an enormous dip um, at around three and a half thousand hertz um, huge great suck out um, and I suspect that's because you know drivers that weren't matched to the crossover vice versa have been put in here there's big phasing issues and it's it's just not working um, on axis on the left speaker, no high frequency output at all. Um, so the tweeter is not working in this one. Whether that's the tweeter itself, whether that's a crossover issue, loose wire, I don't know yet. But the characteristics up until the HF disappears are similar to this one. Um, horizontally, as we move 20 degrees, 40 degrees, they kind of improve a little bit. Um, and when we take the covers off and have a look, we'll see we've got a tweeter and mid-range here. So that asymmetrical design, they probably come into phase a little bit better, but it's still not great. That peak drops down a little bit in the HF. Um, spectral decay, they, they're ringing like nobody's business. The tweeter has a huge trailing um, tail, which is in the high frequency really unusual. Um, it looks like it's part of the um amplitude peak it's just ringing out so yeah it'll be interesting to see um also going back to the horizontal as you move off and the frequency response gets better you can see the um phase relationship improves as well so um yeah definitely these drivers just aren't married up to this crossover i'll um throw these measurements in now so you can uh, have a look and i'll put some notes on them
Yeah, so you've also seen I've done a side by side comparison of the two as well. Um, so yeah, not uh, not great. So we'll take the covers off um, and have a look at the cabinets. Right, so there we are. So as you can see, we've got new tweeters and new mid-range drivers. Um, this one seems to have been done a little bit nicer. Um, the cutout by the looks of it has been um, enlarged. Here it's been painted up. Um, different screws, just wood screws on these. So um, yeah, but we've got no HF output from this one. So we've got Kef's um, B200 mid-bass driver. These are a transmission line um, speaker. Uh, the glue around the front here has broken away, but this one looks a lot better than this one, condition-wise, in terms of the front baffle. But we've got no high frequency output from that one at all. Um, and yeah, like I say, transmission line. And the bass, if I just use the signal generator, um, good bass output. Um, 40 hertz is still good. Uh, 30, there's still a significant output there. So yeah, um, quite interesting really. So cabinet wise, um, I'd imagine they're veneer chipboard. Looking at the inside they are, it's not bad. Um, we've had some filling done here. This one, it's a bit dry, really and truly they both want sanding back and um, re-oiling. Binding post cups at the back here. Um, yeah, very thin walled. But yeah, there we go. So I think what we'll do, we'll take a quick look inside the left one, which isn't working, and um, then I can get back to Tim with uh, with what I recommend. Right, let's take a look inside. Right, incidentally, or interestingly, there's quite a rattle inside this one. The other one a little bit as well. So, not too sure what's going on there. Right, um, machine screws, which is good. Incidentally, when I'm pushing on the woofer, our mid isn't moving, so I'm assuming this is either in its own chamber, enclosure, or it's a sealed mid-range. I mean, as we've got uh, an open port, the air pressure inside when I'm doing that is most of it's probably coming out of there anyway. So, right. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the rattling we can uh, we can hear. Um, yeah, okay, interesting. Um, I think these caps have been replaced. At least, let's get something to put them from. You see that all right? Yeah. Okay, so it looks like one, two, three have been replaced. These are the owl caps made for Falcon, so they've been replaced. Um, we've got original resistors, wire round, wound resistors. Um, I think these 60 microfarad owl caps are probably original. Um, so, yeah, we've got... An air core inductor there, but I'm just wondering if what I was hearing rattling around might have been an iron core pushed through there, but I don't think it was. Right, we've got cables. Yeah, so that cable there should be attached to the tweeter. So hopefully that's the reason why we've lost our output and the solder connections are pretty dry. Yeah, these are just falling off. Okay, so that's the reason why. So they all want redoing. And this is one of the diff uh, 
reasons why if you're going to rewire your speaker you just don't need to use wiring this big it's just not necessary this um, cable here has basically missed um, so yeah this all wants redoing um, and yeah we've had some of the caps replaced um, but obviously we've got a massive suck out issue with our mid-range so this needs some work to integrate this correctly so let's um, take out our mid which is in a cardboard tube so it is in its own enclosure wood screws nice to replace those with some um, decent pan head black screws okay so we've got a monocore um, 50 watts RMS, 120 watts maximum, 8 ohm. Chances are the original was 4, um, and that impedance difference is probably causing the main issue. Um, so it might not be too difficult to reintegrate this. Um, solder connections are a bit better on this. So yeah, uh, 300 hertz to 5 kilohertz. Recommended 12 um, dB per octave slope, so second order. Um, but yeah, that's quite a nice mid driver. Okay, let's put that back in for the time being. I was wondering when I first looked at these whether this would just be like a fill in driver um, because the B200 is often used as a mid base driver. Um, and this is probably a inch silk soft dome tweeter so I would imagine that could probably play low enough to meet this um, but yeah right let's take the tweeter out Audax we like Audax so there's our wire that's broken off. This has been chewed to crap to get that in there. So we've got a huge, great gap here. So yeah, certainly not particularly airtight. I know the pressure in this chamber is reduced because we have the transmission line port, um, but even so, that, uh, that wants to be sealed in there. There's a big gap. So really this wants um, another piece of timber gluing in here. Um, and then a gasket cut for it so this seals in nicely um, yeah so while we're here let's just solder that back on so I use a um, foam like this to make sure we don't push the diaphragm in the dome in yeah that crossover swinging in the breeze needs to be fixed down This wire is a bit big to successfully or neatly solder on and this has a little bit of cracking around it as well so yeah anyway that's soldered back on so yeah you can see right through there our gap right I'm gonna put this back together and then we will have a chat about what needs doing and then, Tim, when you've seen this video, we can go from there. <laughs> okay, right, so all being well, our tweeter's now working. Um, you know, to find a wire that's completely broken off, <laughs> um, which I can see why, with the size of wire that's been used. Um, it's coming away from the crossover in a number of places, and they're just not very well soldered to the drivers. Um, that's not the fault of the guy soldering, it's just the wire's so bloody big. Um, anyway, so what would I do? Well, the first thing to do is to 
um, address the crossovers, um, check those out, um, recap them. Um, looks like some of them have been changed, but um, yeah, recap them. Um, and we're going to need to integrate this mid-range properly, so that's going to involve different um, values anyway. So lead wires off the drivers, out the port uh, with that crossover, um, measure, jump in new components and um, get that integrated correctly because that's an enormous suck out. It might just be a phasing issue. It might just be that the tweeter or the mid polarity wants reversing, probably <clears throat> more like the tweeter reversing polarity because this seems to cross reasonably well to the woofer. Um, as you go off axis horizontally, whilst that big suck out lifts up, we start developing a, a peak where the mid is meeting the, um, the woofer. So it, it all needs addressing. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, get the crossover sorted, integrate the mids, um, la di da -di. Um, I'll then suggest that we um, obviously need to refix that crossover in properly, so that's not an issue. Change that wiring, get all those joints soldered correctly, but that's all part of the crossover work. Cabinets, um, they're not bad. Um, I reckon if these are sanded back, re-oiled, these should come up quite well. Um, at the same time, whilst we're doing that, um, some of this sounds a bit hollow so i'm wondering whether some of the glue joints are giving up so uh, re-glue the inside of the cabinet while the um, drivers are out yeah sand up oil um, the front of this one's quite nice but we need to fix these gaps we have here and then this one wants re-gluing in and then we would mask this up uh, respray the front black like we've got here and then reinstall the drivers so they they'll look good um you know like this one this is miles better than this with the black all the way around it um, which is probably what this used to be um change these wood screws for something like decent black pan heads um and then finally, recloth these because um, that's kind of gone a whether it was black before, I don't think it was, it's just a light grey colour. It's really grubby, so recloth them. Um, they're really difficult to get out as well, so like I normally do, you've probably seen put some pull tags on the bottom of them. Here's the covers I've been making for my um, BC ones, so. Uh, pull tag at the bottom just so you can get hold of it and not have to pick away at it with something like that um so yeah so um hopefully we'll be sorting these out and there'll be a part two um but yeah there we go anyway cheers for watching have a good bank holiday monday catch you all soon